Ni hao, konnichiwa, bonjour. Hi everybody, welcome to Storytime Readings, Unenchanted Book Readings, a top 1% global kids podcast with Lady Twizzleton, Sir Herbert Stinkies, and Marilyn A. Bear. You ready for Ruby the Butterfly? It's a beautiful fairy tale of two kingdoms and a special butterfly with amazing powers. Oh, I want the story. Yeah, tell me the story. I love Ruby the Butterfly. Ruby the Butterfly with the gold wings with rubies in them had diamonds for antlers. And Ruby the Butterfly is the guardian of the royal treasury of the Sapphire Princess Lindsay's story. Lindsay is a beautiful girl with long golden brown hair, sapphire blue eyes, and a tan Mediterranean complexion. She's from Italy and grew up very proper with her English parents, Jean Zero story, Queen Magenta story, and her little brother, Forever story. Forever story is her brother? Yes, and they lived in the beautiful kingdom of Pelican Falls. Beautiful pelicans, beautiful birds, poppy flowers, and golden butterflies, and the famous ruby butterfly. They even had blue-footed bobbies. What's a blue-footed bobby? They're birds with blue feet, silly. Oh, yes, and they dance around, and they're so fun. And Ruby the butterfly had special powers. By day, she had laser beam eyes and could see over 100 feet into the future. She had fast wings to jump around. You mean she could fly like a jet plane? Yes. And at nighttime, her eyes glowed so she could see anything lurking in the dark. Her diamond antennas let out a high-frequency vibration to restore positive energy in a thousand-foot area. The royal treasury was located in a beautiful garden hidden in a magical hedge maze on a high mountain hill. If you could find the secret door, then one would be subjected to the many booby traps set to catch the intruder. Ruby's family had guarded the treasure for a thousand years. The treasure supplied the quaint and charming kingdom with protection stones. Some stones emitted high frequency so the area was known for its happy, positive people. Everyone in town was productive. All the citizens of Pelican Point frolicked along the beach doors, playing, playing with sandcastles, skateboarding, surfing, and in winter, everyone snowboarded and skied. Everyone in Pelican Falls had success, and no one ever complained. They all got along with their neighbors, no matter how different they were. Neighbors didn't care if you had stripes or were purple, if you're round or a triangle, as everyone got along peacefully and jollyly. But far, far away in another kingdom, a little tyrant prince was an unhappy boy. He was mean, rude, and impolite. His whole royal staff of workers were terrified of the little spoiled prince. Prince Edward Brunsworth. Prince Edward had curly, dark brown hair and a light brown complexion. He played with his toys, breaking them. He often tossed them off the cliff near High Tower One. He scared and terrorized his staff, staff by saying he'd do the same to them. <gasps> what? He throws his toys off the cliff? Yes. His nanny, Garcilia, has long, dark brown hair and soft, loose curls. She has light brown complexion and dazzling green eyes. She was clumsy and illiterate. Garcilia never learned to read or write and flunked out of school. She was never able to keep a job for long because she had no skills. The only reason she wasn't sacked by Prince Edward was that he loved her story she told him. Garcilia would make up stories about legendary beasts that would devour princes who didn't learn their schoolwork. Prince Edward loved the dragon stories and would use his fire breath to spray down villages. Edward would then tell the story the way he had wanted about saying the dragon slayed the villagers. Garcilia then would tell a story about a witch who would kidnap little boy princes, especially if they misbehaved. Edward was mesmerized by Garcilia's storytelling. His favorite story was The Diary of a Fire-Breathing Dragon by Sir Herbert Sneakies and How to Become a Samurai. Garcilia's storytelling was the only thing keeping her job in the palace. One day, Garcilia was doing her work and she overheard Queen Elisa and King Bernardo talking. The queen wanted to replace her and bring in a well-educated nanny from the prestigious Harvard University. Yes, I think this new nanny is very refined and well-educated, said Queen Elisa. King Bernardo was very impressed with her impeccable res resume. Yes, the new nanny is very refined and well-educated. She's from an impressive, impeccable background. 
She even told the Duke of Ellington's twin boys. Yes, indeed, said King Bernardo. This simple, uneducated klutz of a nanny Garcilla has to go, said the king. Yes, indeed, agreed Queen Eliza. Poor Garcilla overheard what the king and queen said. She was going to be let go, so some fancy nanny would replace her to tutor Master Edward. Tears came running down Garcilla's cheek. Oh no! The king and queen are going to replace me! Oh! Who's going to tell stories to, to Prince Edward? I love working with Prince Edward. This is my saddest day ever. She ran to High Tower 1 and was about to jump off the cliff. She had nowhere to go and no skills to get a job. She had no family. She was about to step off the cliff when she noticed a beautiful red butterfly overhead. The red butterfly was twirling and dancing. Garcilla watched the butterfly dance. The butterfly was so pretty with its golden wings, diamond antlers, and rubies in its in its wings. And it shone in, it, in the light as it glistened. And the butterfly danced and danced and twirled and twirled and flew and flew. The ruby sparkled and the diamond shone bright. Garcilla seemed to be able to communicate with the red butterfly with the gold tip wings and diamond for antlers. There's a storm brewing. I'll need your kingdom to align with mine. We're having a dark winter due to the spell cast by the witches of Hemlock of the Fifth Order. They are vile and most nasty. The only thing to save our kingdom is to unite. Your Prince Edward and my Princess Leslie Storm must join together. Here's a little pixie dust to start you off. Use it wisely and sparingly. What? The butterfly is talking to me? How can a butterfly talk? I must be imagining that or dreaming it. It's probably a new story popping into my head. Hmm. Imagine that. A butterfly talking. It cannot be. This is such a sad day. Garcilla's foot is near the ledge of the cliff, and suddenly Ruby is gone, and she hears a cry for help. Help! Help! Help me! Please help me now! I order someone to help me! Help! Why? It's Master Edward! Prince Edward must have fallen over the cliff! Garcilla runs over and goes down the cliff. She's suddenly able to climb down the scary steep cliff and grabs the prince by the hand and helps him up top of the cliff like some mighty warrior with superpowers. Her ceiling seemed to possess some kind of super strength to jump over, climb down, and pull Prince Edward up. Oh, Garcilla, you saved me, said Prince Edward. You saved me. Suddenly, the queen and king walked up and looked in horror. They both thought Garcilla had pushed the prince over the edge. You incompetent woman, said King Bernardo. How dare you let the prince fall, said the queen. You are fire, said the king. Indeed, said the queen. A new refined nanny with jet black hair, dark blue eyes, and dewy white skin wearing refined clothes walked up. Click, 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 click. Edward, this is your new nanny, Cecilia. What? My new nanny? Well, I don't want a new nanny. I want Garcilla. Garcilla has been let go, said the queen. Guards escort Garcilla out of the kingdom, ordered the king. Two big burly castle guards took Garcilla and walked her out of the castle, locking the door. Hello, Edward. I'm Cecilia, your new nanny. Edward looks at the new nanny and says, go away, and he walks off in a huff. I understand his frustration as he thinks he is bonded with his old nanny. He hasn't had the proper nanny education that I can give him. Her cold blue still eyes watch Edward walk off. Cecilia follows. She walks into the library. She looks around and no one is there. She looks at her watch and brings it to her mouth. She presses a red button. I'm in the castle. And everything is going as planned. <laughs> Phase one accomplished. The old nanny was fired. Soon the prince will be under our control and our takeover will be a success. A hologram image of a warlock with still gray eyes, long jet black hair, chiseled chin appears. He has long nails and has thorns sticking out of his cape. That's good to hear, Cecilia. 
snarls Thorn, speaking with a deep voice. Report to me at midnight. Yes, Thorn. Meanwhile, Prince Edward was kicking his soccer ball into the wall of his room. He was angry and mad. Cecilia walks in. Hello, Master Edward. You don't have permission to enter my room. Your parents gave me permission. Do you mind if I sit on this chair? And Nanny Cecilia sits down. Yes, I do, says Edward. I don't want you. Go away. I want my nanny back. I am your nanny, says Cecilia. I don't know you. Oh, we'll have to get to know each other. Just then, Garcilia uses the pixie dust. Suddenly, she's floating up in the air, and she flies over to the window of Prince Edward's bedroom. Oh, I'm flying! Oh, what can this be? What kind of magic is this? How can one fly? Oh, oh, let me just go check on the prince. I'll just look in the window. No one can see me up here. And she goes to the bedroom at Prince Edward's window and looks in. And inside, she sees Prince Edward talking to the new nanny, Cecilia. I don't want you. Go away. Your old nanny was illiterate. She was illiterate. She can't read or write. How can that benefit the future king of White Cliffs? You need someone skilled to refine and shape you to grow into a powerful, smart king. I'm already smart. I don't need you. Nanny Cecilia's blue eyes glowed red. Suddenly, she took out her wand and waved it around. She pointed it at young Edward. Garcilia looked in horror. Oh, my lord, she's a witch. She's one of the hemlock witches. Oh, something's fishy here. Nanny Cecilia is angry. No one talks to me that way. You will listen to me and do as you're told, demands Nanny Cecilia as she points the wand and is about to zap Prince Prince Edward with her wand. Garcilia uses some pixie dust, but she has to sneeze. Oh, oh, ah, choo, ah, choo. The dust falls and the wind blows the dust into Nanny Cecilia's eyes. Ah, Cecilia screams as her eyes are burning. She runs out to wash her eyes with water in the bathroom. Garcilia floats to the window and lands in front of Prince Edward. Oh. And Prince Edward is so happy to see his old nanny. Garcilia, hey, that's a neat trick. How'd you do that? As he looks at Nanny floating in through the window. Garcilia tells Prince Edward about Ruby the Butterfly story. Garcilia, my whole kingdom can be in grave danger. We have to do something. But these witches can hurt my parents if I leave. Garcilia thinks quickly. What if your parents and the witch think you've run off to go play and go and you're just lost in the woods? That will give us some time to find the Princess Lindsay story so you two can join the forces, says Garcilia quickly. Nanny, you know what? You're so smart. We need to move fast, Master Edward. Nanny Cecilia is washing her eyes. She looks in the mirror. I'll get that little prince and wring his neck for this. She walks out the bathroom and bumps into Queen Eliza and King Bernardo. How's everything going with Master Edward? Oh, is Edward going to, to learn to speak Italian or French yet? Says the Queen excitedly. Everything is coming along just fine, just fine, says Cecilia. Perfect, says the Queen. Continued, says the King. The King and Queen go on a leisurely stroll around the garden. Nancy Cecilia, Nanny Cecilia walks to the library. She calls with her phone watch. Thorne's hologram pops up and his deep voice comes on. Anything wrong, Cecilia? The prince isn't as easy as expected. Well, you're a witch. Use your magic. He'll be under your spell and control. I need you to secure control of the kingdom by Sunday night before the sun, ton sun turns blood red. This is our chance we've been waiting for. The lion portal is opening and the frequency will be low, so we'll be able to take over. Sure, I'll whip out my wand and the prince will be putty under my spell. He'll never speak to me that way ever again. Turn him to a troll or a frog or, or something small and manageable. Yes, snarls. I'll teach that prince some manners. Cecilia. Let me remind you, if you fail, I'll personally boil you in a vat of hot liquid. Yes, Master Thorne. Good. We have an understanding. Cecilia walks up towards the stairs towards Prince Edward's room. Meanwhile, Garcilia and Prince Edward find a large sea turtle. He walks up. 
Come on, we need to get to Pelican Falls before the witches get here. How do we stop her time? Gracilia asked the prince. What about using a dummy for me so they won't notice I'm gone? You have dinner at 8 p.m. They will notice if you're not there. I can say I'm sick and I need to go to bed. Oh, well, we need to find a dummy prince so you're, you're not to alarm the king and queen to summon the guards that you're missing. Garcilla gets a great idea. Hey, remember that pumpkin pot story? The pumpkin ghost story I told you about? She says, yeah. Well, I will point this little pixie dust at that pumpkin patch. There's a tall scarecrow and a small boy scarecrow in the pumpkin patch guarding the birds from eating the pumpkin. Great idea, Garcilia. So Garcilia sprinkles the pixie dust on the small boy scarecrow. Dance, dance, come to life. Become Prince Edward's dummy until dawn tomorrow. Dance, dance, come to life. The scarecrow boy comes to life. He was a big dummy, but was sweet. Hello? Hello? I need you to pretend to be Prince Edward until dawn tomorrow. Hello, said the dummy. Pretend. The scare boy, boy was clueless. It's the best we can do, Master Prince Edward. Oh, and Prince Edward was delighted to meet the, the straw boy. I order you to go to my room, wear my clothes, and at dinner say you're sick and excuse yourself and go to bed. To bed. Be a prince. Go to dinner. Be sick. Ugh. <laughs> I'm not sure if he gets it, Master Master Edward, but I think this is the best chance we have. So the turtle serpently said, We really must be going before the north winds pick up. Garcilia and Prince Edward get on the flying turtle and head to the faraway kingdom of Pelican Falls to the north. The scarecrow boy waved from down below, and they waved back. Prince Edward and Garcilla waved to the scarecrow boy. Good luck, scarecrow. Do try your best. Try my best. The scarecrow boy, he walked around clueless and bumped into a wall. He floundered his way toward Edward's room. He finds Prince Edward's room and puts on the prince's clothes. They don't fit him well, as he is too small. Nanny Cecilia comes into the room and sees the dummy prince in his outfit. There you are. Now, I want us to get along, so here's a spell for you. Under my spell, you will be. I am your commander, and you will listen to me. You will do what I say, or I will turn you into a rat. The dummy looks at her. Do what you say. Yes, Cecilia. Ah, that's better. Much better. But we have to do something about those clothes. Ah, gosh, that... Old nanny of yours can't even tell your clothes to look like a prince. Ah, zap, zap, zap. Cecilia zaps the prince's clothes, and he looks so much better. Hurry, we'll be late to dinner. Dinner, says the dummy straw boy. That night, the king and queen are sipping on delicious soup, and the dummy boy is just sitting there. And young Albert looks dashing. Doesn't he, Bernardo, said the queen. Yes, he looks most distinguished in that outfit, said the king. Cecilia, you have done wonders with his wardrobe, says the queen. The dummy prince slurps his food, his soup. Slurp, slurp, slurp. <laughs> burp, burp, burp. Oh, dear, he must be sick. The dummy remembers to pretend to be sick. Ah, oh, my stomach hurts. Oh, Prince Edward, you aren't feeling well, says the queen. He does look peaked, said the king. He looks very tired, probably exhausted from all of his new studies with the new nanny, right? Oh, yes, he's been studying very hard, said Nanny Cecilia. Oh, Prince Edward, why don't you retire to your room, my boy? I'm so happy you're studying, said the queen. Very well. The dummy prince went down to his room. The next day, the boy dummy walked back to the pumpkin patch. He turned to straw. The spell was worn off, and he was still wearing the prince's clothes. That morning, Nanny Cecilia knocks on the prince's door. She opens it, and his bed is empty. She looks everywhere, but he is in the room. What? He's gone? No. Where did he go? She runs upstairs and searches all of the 22 bedrooms in the castle and all 22 bathrooms. She looks in the attic, the library, the kitchen, and even downstairs in the dungeon. But she 
only finds old skeletons and rats down the dungeon stairs. Oh, he's gone. Where did that prince go? Wait till I catch him. She runs in the garden and passes the pumpkin patch. She sees the dummy with the prince's clothes. And she stops in her tracks and runs back and looks at the dummy with the prince's clothes on. I smell a rat. Drat. Cecily runs inside the castle and goes upstairs to the living room. Behind a bookshelf, she pulls out a crystal ball. It hovers and glows. Tell me where the boy is, crystal ball. The dark brown boy you seek is far, far from here. What? He's not here? Where is he? He is with a dark-haired woman flying on a giant turtle heading north. How can a turtle fly? Magic was used. Magic? Has someone discarded my plot to kid discovered my plot to dis to kidnap the prince? Yes, replied the crystal ball. Who discovered my plot? A red butterfly, said the crystal ball. A red butterfly. Tell me who the red butterfly is, crystal ball. Ruby, Ruby the butterfly, guardian of the sapphire treasure. I'll get that meddling butterfly. I'll swat my flycatcher, and that will be the end of that meddling bug. And wait till I catch that nanny. That will be the end of her. Very good, Witch Cecilia, said the crystal ball. The crystal ball retreated and disappeared. The king and queen walked past the library. Oh, good. You're getting books for a son to read, said the queen. Oh, he's feeling much better and wants to study. Lies, nanny, Cecilia. This is excellent, said the king. Oh, yes, and I thought a couple of Shakespeare books would be good, great for him to read. He's feeling much better and wanted to study, said Nanny. Cecilia. I always love a good tragedy myself, said the king. Mac Macbeth is such a good story. Oh, yes, and I love Jack the Baron Golden here, said the queen. Oh, yes. Oh, and the swiggles are so great, said the queen, too. Where is Prince Edward? Oh, I sent him to go collect some items for a science project. Lied. Nanny Cecilia. A science project? How excellent, said the king. Our, our other nanny never had him do anything advanced. This is wonderful. Carry on, said the queen. I will, said Cecilia. Her eyes glowed red. The king and queen went on a nice stroll in the gardens. When I find that prince, I'll turn him into a tiny frog. No, a hug for trigger me. No one escapes my wrath, said Nanny Cecilia. Garcilia and Prince Edward land in Pelican Falls where they greeted Ruby the Butterfly. She guided them to meet Prince Lindsay, who was playing with her little brother forever. Prince Edward and Lindsay quickly became friends with uh, and her brother forever too. They had so many things in common. They both like hot fudge sundaes, strawberries and cream, and orange marmalade with peanut butter. The little prince and princess made plans with Ruby the Butterfly. They had to use special stones from the treasure to defeat Snarl's thorn and the witches of Hemlock of the Fifth Order. Ruby had to fly into the garden and enter the secret sapphire blue door. It was a dangerous mission. Ruby might not make it back as the treasure has many traps and no one has ever successfully retrieved the treasure before. So Ruby went into the blue door. She flew fast and her wings flapped and flittered. She flapped and flittered and flittered and flew and flew. She ducked under magic bomb explosions. Magic beams of gold light rays shot at her. Swirling lights like snakes tried to strangle the butterfly. Fireballs shot out at her. Deadly spires jumped up and tried to catch the butterfly in their web. Poisonous plants that eat insects tried to eat Ruby with their grabbing long leaf hands. Ruby used all her power to get the treasure and retrieve the golden stone, sapphire stone. Ruby stones and emerald stones. Ruby made it. She had the code and unlocked the treasure box. Ruby took out the precious stones and started to fly back. Big fireflies were following her and shooting poisonous darts at her. A fire dart shot at Ruby and hit her right wing and singed it. Her wing was on fire. It was singed. She dropped an emerald stone. She was flying at half capacity, but she had to fly and catch the falling stone. Ruby flew and flew. She flittered and flapped her wings. She flittered and flapped and flapped and flapped. The fireflies were right behind her. Zzzz. An army of swarm of fireflies with their lights and their poisonous starts were right behind her. Zzzz. They tried to blind her so she couldn't see where she was going. They shot more fiery darts at her. A big flying fish jumped up out of the water with a long pointed spear nose. He was heading right for Ruby. Ruby couldn't fly so fast as she had singed wings and heavy stones to carry. The 
long pointed fish hook nose, Miss Ruby, and hit the firefly swarm, making them dart off in different directions. Ruby was able to see now and flew ahead. She saw the blue door up ahead. She was close but slowing down. She looked at her son's wing. It was burnt badly. The whole kingdom depended on her. She was getting dizzy and about to faint. She was losing it. She wouldn't make it. She was dying. She was so faint and her heartbeat was slowing down. Suddenly she heard the voice of her father. Ruby, you can do it. It's in your bloodline to defend the kingdom and its treasure. Don't give up. You have it in you to succeed. Hang on. Suddenly, Ruby felt energized and flew faster with the heavy stones. Fire darts aimed at her. The Firefly King, Breather McCraw, shoots the fire dart, more fire darts now at her. Suddenly, a swarm of fireflies, hundreds of thousands, shoot at Ruby. The fire dart zooms towards her really fast. Ruby remembers her father's voice. You have it in you to succeed. Don't give up. Ruby zigs and zigs and zags and zags, ziggity zig, ziggity zag, zag and zag. She flaps and flaps and she flaps her wings and twirls and twirls. Another fire dart cuts, catches her wing. Her wing is on fire. She was losing speed. She was in pain, but she had to make it through the blue door. Princess Lindley, her brother forever, Prince Edbert and Garcilia were all waiting and waving to her. They cheered her on. Come on, Ruby, come on, Ruby, said Prince Edbert. Come on, Ruby, come on, Ruby, said Prince Lizzie. Come on, Ruby, said forever. Come on, Ruby, said Garcilla. You can do it, love. You can do it, love, said Garcilla, the nanny. Ruby aimed and flew and landed in Garcilla's hand. The bag of pixie dust shook and a few sparkles landed on Ruby. Quick, get the stones, said Prince Albert. Let's activate them before the warlock snarls. Thorns activates his frequency weapon. Yes, come on, everybody. So they quickly got the stones and and um, activated them. Suddenly, Witch Cecilia flew down. No, those are mine. No one messes with me. You fooled me. That was very clever of you with the straw prince dummy. But now I will turn you into a real straw dummy along with your friends. No, said Garcilia. Witch Cecilia waved her hand and Prince Edward jumped in front of Nanny Garcilia and he was struck down. He fell unconscious. No, Master Prince Edward. Prince Lindsay and Garcilia and her brother, Forever Story, ran. Garcilia grabbed Cecilia's broom and struck her on the head. Take that, you old witch, said Garcilia. Out! Forever pushes the witch and the rocks fall from the witch Cecilia's hands. I'll get you, you little brat, forever. They took the rocks, and Princess Lindsay activated the rocks. Rocks, rocks, oh treasure of Pelican Falls, activate now and save my kingdom and save Prince Edward. The rocks sparkled and sparkled and sparkled, and twirls and twirls and shiny light came out of the rubies and the sapphire and the golden stones. Suddenly, an army of soldiers woke from the underground. They had metal uniforms and stormed up. Cecilia looked at the army, and she waved her magical wand and zapped an army of her own to defeat the army. <laughs> what an army! I am the witch of the hemlocks of the fifth order, says Cecilia. Take this! She waved her wand and her army. Get them! Catch them all! Seize them! Seize them, said Cecilia. The armies fought, but the Sapphire Army was stronger and skilled in battle than the Skull Army. They defeated the Witch's Skull Army. They captured Cecilia and held her down with magic. Let go of me! You let go of me! I'll get you for this, you meddling Garcilia! You illiterate woman! I'll get all of you, she said as the Sapphire Army held her down. Princess Lindley, Lindsay, her mom and dad rushed to check on Prince Albert. Prince Albert is still unconscious while he lived. Garcilla went to Ruby, who was dying. Look, something is happening to Ruby the butterfly. Ruby seems to be getting better. Everyone look. The dust. Quickly sprinkle it on Prince Albert, said forever. And his sister, Lindsay's story. Garcilla took and sprinkled the last pixie dust on the little prince. Here, I'll sprinkle the dust on the little prince Edward. Miss Lindsay's story? Yes, maybe this will work. Prince Albert's eyes opened and he moved and woke up he's awake garcilia yes welcome back prince albert said garcilia what did i miss said the prince edward a whole army fighting and we caught your nanny cecilia she's not my nanny garcilia is 
They laughed and looked and Ruby moved her wings. Look, Ruby's wings are moving. Ruby's coming back to life, cried Princess Lindsay. And her brother forever.